Is Overwatch 2 really dying like a lot of people are claiming? And what needs to happen to the game to get it back on top again? Let's have a look. Hey guys, I'm James he's from the Omnic Past. My previous video was a bit more on the lighter side, but there are still a few important topics that we need to discuss. Now one week goes by where we as a community do not get upset about something that happened. And I'm not here to judge as we as a community or as a group of people are overdoing it with a hate for that company and their franchises. Well, Overwatch specifically. But I am going to say that some people are riding that hate wave as if it is going to lead them straight to a sandy beach in Hawaii. Or like they say Hawaii. But that is another topic, something for a different video. Today I'm talking to those that love to carpet bomb the comments of any piece of Overwatch content with three simple words. Overwatch is dying. Yeah, three. And after all the drama that we saw plastered on all kinds of websites, some content creators moving on to greener pastures, and the lack of growth on my own channel right here, although that is most likely my own fault, you would be inclined to start believing those doom-fueled prophecies. But is that really the case and what needs to happen to get Overwatch on top again? First, let's have a look at what a dead game is. In my opinion, it is a game that in the first instance has a small niche community playing the game. So small actually that it starts to hinder the matchmaking and you have queue times of over 30 minutes for instance. So let's just say that you get the top 500 experience in Overwatch throughout all ranks. And second, as a result of that smaller player base, the investment of resources into that game, into that franchise is brought back to a minimum. Just enough to keep it up and running. And Blizzard actually has a few games that come pretty close to that status. Both Starcraft and Heroes of the Storm. The thing is, those games did not die because they were bad games. Or that they didn't have enough players per se. They didn't have enough players to make it profitable for the people that make the decisions. So no new content was developed for the game, which in turn also cost them players. I am not familiar enough with Heroes of the Storm to see if it ever had the potential to compete with games like Dota and League of Legends. It might have been a smart business decision or it could just have been an easy way out. My point is that the death of a game is often a business decision. Is it worth to keep spending resources on this title and is it going to net me more money than I actually invested? Now I do understand that players don't really like that idea because they are passionate about these games. But making games is a business. We can discuss however how that business is done and how much of that money is supposed to disappear in the pockets of the people that actually contributed nothing to those games. But in the end, all of these companies need to make money. And if games start to cost more than they bring in, well, some of these difficult decisions need to be made. That being said, Overwatch currently makes a lot more money than it costs. In the first quarter after release of Overwatch 2, they made a hundred million dollars. That is a lot of money. And I'm pretty sure that that number dropped in the next quarters. But I'm also confident that they still make enough money to pay themselves and put on the lights for all of the neighborhood, like the whole of California. According to ActivePlayer.io, which is a website that tracks player stats for the different games, the monthly active players for Overwatch 2 has been rising since the release. Every single month. And the peak daily active players has kind of been stable, around 2 million. I mean, there's always a bit of a fluctuation around the new season, but other than that, it still seems to be doing good. What you can say is that the monthly players are going up, but the daily players are stabilizing. Which means that we probably see more casual players that jump into the game occasionally once or twice a month, and that the number of hardcore players that play it every single day is slowly shrinking. And it is those hardcore players that spend the most money on the game. Hence that I think that the second and third quarter might not have been as impressive as that first one. But look, even if they only made half in the second and third quarter than they did in the first, they're still doing very good. In other words, it doesn't look like they'll have to pull the proverbial plug out of Overwatch. It is not dying. That all being said, we as a community, especially those hardcore fans, we expect more from Overwatch, more from Blizzard. And I'm talking about us Overwatch 1 players, but also a lot of the new players. This game was at the top at some point. It was an award-winning game, and we as a community celebrated the fact that it won those awards. We were proud, and that's what we need to get back to. We want to be proud that we are Overwatch players. But what needs to happen to get that done? Let me start out with a very unpopular opinion. It is not about 6 vs 6. It is not about free skins or loot boxes. These are all ghosts of the past that we as old school players are holding on to for dear life. 
but the chances of them coming back are rather small. And to be honest, I don't want some of them back. And Blizzard bringing back the on-fire meter this season, or making May freeze her targets a little more, is not a return to Overwatch 1. It is simply progress. Like, you move that smelly little pine tree you hang from your mirror in your car, you move it from your old car to your new car, not because you think you're going to turn your new car into your old car that you loved so much, but kind of because you like the smell of artificially chemical pine forests. You weirdo. They are clearly trying to find ways of making rewards feel meaningful, of making progression feel meaningful, without making less money. Huh. Why is that money so important? Like I said, it's a different story. It's business versus art. The love for the product versus the love for a 25 million mansion for your pit bull called Flower. But there's more going on here than us just holding on for dear life. Team 4 has not managed to convince us of the added value and they have not yet been able to make a product that stands out in that typical Blizzard way. They are not the top of their genre or their niche. Much like Diablo and Warcraft are. Talking about World of Warcraft. That game when it released, it dominated the MMO niche for more than a decade. They came in blazing and they took down every of their competitors and a lot of them tried to come back with new products and all of these woe killers but they never got far until Warcraft got detrapped. And one of the games that took this spot was Final Fantasy. They, in their way, challenged Blizzard. Because Blizzard had done this to themselves. They had grown compliant. The game was no longer meeting those Blizzard standards. And they saw that. They changed that around. And now it's kind of slowly getting its place back at the top. It won't be alone this time around. But it is kind of reassuring to see that happen. Overall, the Warcraft community is happy with the game. One week more than the other. I mean, gamers, am I right? The interesting thing is it wasn't a price drop into that 12 month subscription fee that you need to pay for Warcraft every single month that made the difference. They didn't do a price drop at all. To be honest, there's more microtransactions in Warcraft right now than there ever been. And those players keep forking over those $12 every single month. Maybe they brought back the old content. No, not really. I mean, they have had the classic servers and those have been quite successful in a way, one more than the other. But it is the retail game that is bringing people back. It is the actual content and in the game that makes the difference. The new campaign they released, the new systems, the new progression, and you can copy paste that to Overwatch. If they have the ambition to be the number one game in that market again, if they want to take on games like Apex Legends, Valorant, even maybe Fortnite, it won't be by lowering the cost of the skins. It won't be by bringing back loot boxes. It will be by adding more meaningful, interesting content that pushes that game forward. Content that stops us from caring about all of those cosmetics. Content that I'll gladly pay a battle pass for. Maybe with 5 extra bucks. Like Diablo for example. I enjoy that game so much I've spent a lot of hours playing that game. I feel rewarded for the time that I've put in the game. But I have not spent a single euro on it. Well, except for buying it. But I have not spent a single dollar or euro in that shop. I bought the game and that was it. I'm not playing Diablo to look fancy. I'm playing Diablo to optimize my druid build, to run around like a bear and to smash everybody that gets in my way. Yeah, that sounded extra weird. <laughs> I do not want to diminish the hard work that Team 4 has put in the game up till now. I mean, the game is in the best spot it has been since the release in October. But they have followed up every step that they took, every bit of progress they made with, with bad news. And I hope that stops. Now, preferably. <laughs> Overwatch has a chance on August 10th to have the oh my god, that's nice moment. That content in Season 6 needs to slap hard. No more compromises. I don't want to see no more of that close but no cigar content. They need to bring it. But is that going to make the community forget about all that happened up till now? No, of course not. Have you met us? I mean, we love holding on to old arguments. It's, it's one of our favorite things to do. But that needs to be a turning point. They need to shed that skin and show their true colors. So we can start that second year of Overwatch 2 with confidence. This video has been a bit of a rant, but I felt like I needed to talk about this. At this point, we're just going to start counting down till August 10th. And there's still a lot of fun content on the way, so let's enjoy that. Now, tell me how do you feel about the future of the game? Let me know in the comments. If you want a more lighter topic, check out my video I did on Wednesday, where I basically took your tank main and explained what that says about you. It's, it's a little fun for most of us. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description. Join me during my streams on twitch.tv slash and make sure to subscribe for more updates on Overwatch.